Welcome to my presentation on oral health and chronic disease. I'm Jenny Schuler. I'm an oral health advocate, and I'm really honored to be here to talk with you today. I'd like to thank the Washington Dental Service Foundation and the Whatcom Community College for providing this opportunity for me to talk to you about oral health and overall health. Our objectives today are to take a look at the impact that inflammation that's caused by periodontitis has on chronic conditions. And I want to identify some ways of you helping your clients achieve optimal oral health, and also some other navigation opportunities that will positively improve oral health. And I like to say, not just for your clients, but for yourself as well. <clears throat> So I'm going to step back to the year 2000 when our Surgeon General, um, based on research and data that was done, made this lofty statement to the nation saying, you cannot be healthy without oral health. And it kicked off the opportunity for a lot of research and studies to look at the link between oral health and overall health. And so we've been moving forward from there. And I wanted to start by just reviewing um, gum problems, or gingivitis and periodontal disease. And what's um, common in that is that it's caused by a bacterial infection, both of these. And so these are gum diseases. Gingivitis, the picture on your left, is the beginning of the infection, the beginning of the inflammation. And if you look on those lower teeth, the gums, you'll see that they're red and inflamed and puffy. If you were to touch them, they might bleed a little bit. That's actually an irreversible disease. You can actually go in, if there aren't a lot of hard deposits on those teeth, and you can brush and floss and maybe even do a little bit of rinsing with hydrogen peroxide on a regular basis and bring that gum tissue back to health. On the right side, it's a little bit more severe. It's advanced into periodontitis or periodontal disease. And you can see on that picture on the right that the gums are a lot further up or down on the teeth, and a lot more of the tooth has been exposed. And that's because that bacterial infection, that plaque, that soft deposit, has actually calcified on the teeth. And when you get to that point, then you really have to have intervention, um, dental treatment maybe perio treatment. And so then the, the risk of periodontal disease is bone loss and tooth loss, um, et cetera. So I wanted to take a look at with you um, in our state uh, at older adults, and we're talking about the age of 65 and older. And if you look at chronic disease that's prevalent, 25%, a quarter of our people in that age group have diabetes and 1.8 million in the nation have a pre-diabetic stage, and that's all ages. And then we look at uh, heart disease, um, which is um, registered by death, and there's 23% of that age group in this state that die of heart disease, and 10% that uh, have dementia. And when I look at the oral health data, 64% of that age group has that severe periodontal disease that we were just talking about. And a quarter of them have not been to the dentist in the last year. So it's really interesting to see that um, many of them perceived dental or their oral health as fair or poor. Um, and they have dental needs that need to be addressed, but they haven't gone. Not all of them have gone. So really important for us to keep an eye on uh, where we are with this and how we can help our clients. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about that chronic inflammation. When you have the inflammation of the periodontal disease, it is associated with several other diseases. And we really are looking now in, with the research that inflammation is probably the link. And so we know that if we treat the inflammation by cleaning the teeth and getting the periodontal disease under control, we can also have an impact on chronic disease. So it's really important for you as navigators to think about that link and where can you have conversations to help your clients um, improve their oral health. So here's a statement about periodontal disease and people that have diabetes. Adults 45 years or older with poorly controlled diabetes 
are nearly three times more likely to develop severe periodontal disease compared to people that don't have diabetes. So when you're talking with your clients that have diabetes, this is a really important key message for you to have and for you to share. And then I think back on the fact that there's 25% of that age group of 65 and older that do have diabetes. So we're talking about a lot of our community. So again, when we look at oral health um, and diabetes, the relationship, when you have severe periodontal disease, your blood sugar level goes higher, and so your body functions on that high blood sugar level um, for longer periods of time, and then that puts you at risk for diabetic complications. So there's a lot of of link there that's really important to get that message out so that people understand if I have diabetes and I have high blood sugar, I really need to get my perio um, under control. So key messages is what I'm looking at. Dental implications of people with diabetes is important for you to know too, just so that you can have um, that in the back of your mind as you work with these clients. So they are more at risk, people with diabetes, for cavities, tooth loss, dental abscesses where that um, decay goes right in, inside the tooth and infects the nerve and then the nerve dies and infection happens and that uh, just continues to evolve. So really important to keep an eye on that. There is also the implication of dry mouth, what we call xerostomia, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. Very important to, to understand the connection of that to oral health. They're also at risk for high, are higher risk for yeast and fungal infections. And they do have more trouble with oral healing because of that uh, elevated glucose. So some more um, key messages for you to understand. And so I wanted to come back to dry mouth because in the oral cavity, it's so important to understand this. Um, dry mouth can lead to tooth decay because saliva does so much for us. It actually remineralizes our teeth. It uh, kills bacteria. It allows us to swallow and eat. Um, it neutralizes the acids that actually cause the decay. So if you are a person that is taking a medication and there's over 400 that have the side effect of dry mouth or xerostomia, it's really important for you to understand that if you do have dry mouth, you really need to see the dentist. And there's um, products that we can get for you. There's techniques that we can help you with. Um, and this, this study here just shows that if you're on multiple medications, your risk for dry mouth goes up. So again, a key message for you to bring as you start uh, assessing and working with your clients. I also wanted to look at oral health and heart disease <clears throat> and just talk about the fact that periodontitis or that periodontal disease can actually exacerbate heart conditions. So oral infection is a possible risk factor for stroke as well. So these are key messages that um, the research is still working on um, finding out more about the link. But it's possible that oral bacteria or viruses may directly infect your arteries, your blood vessels. And I think the story that comes to mind for me here is that our cardiac surgeons will ask you to go in and have your teeth cleaned and examined prior to uh, surgery, heart surgery, if, if that's possible, if it's not an emergency. So they obviously see the connection and know that you would be healthier because of that. So there's emerging research happening as, as we speak, um, showing that that inflammation uh, that's caused by periodontal disease impacts not only body systems, but possibly the brain as well. So we're starting to draw some correlations between people that have dementia, Alzheimer's, um, and oral disease. <clears throat> oral disease we know can impact the onset and the progression of dementia. We also know that dementia patients can be at high risk for oral disease, so it goes both ways. 
And if a patient or a client has tooth loss or early periodontitis, they're more at risk for developing dementia. So the ability to impact not only oral health but other system conditions as well is really important to think about. So when I think about that inflammation prevention, I really value the team, us all working as a team, including our patients, our clients, all of the healthcare providers, you as navigators, caregivers that care for some of those clients. If we all have the same information and we understand the relationship between the inflammation and in the oral cavity and those systemic diseases, we are going to improve um, people's health overall. So we know that there is value there in the assessment, the prevention, and the treatment of those oral problems because we can have an impact on the improvement of oral health as well. Really important to understand and, and uh, advocate for. So when I think about oral health disease or oral disease, basically, prevention does work. The brushing twice a day, that's what we need to do. Twice a day, two minutes at a time, um, and before be bedtime is the most important. We need to floss once a day to get the bacteria out between our teeth. We can use fluoride um, supplements, toothpaste, mouthwash, maybe it's in your water supply. And nutritional habits have a, play a role in this too. So eating healthy foods, moderating sugar and refined carbohydrates that really increase your risk for decay. So those are really uh, key messages to get out to you, your family, your clients that um, will really promote optimal oral health. So as we look at navigation opportunities for you as care navigators, coordinating the care between the medical and the dental providers uh, is really important. I think, at, and helping educate your clients so they know that there's a connection. When I talk to my dentist, they need to know about my medical history. And when I talk to my doctor, they need to know about my oral conditions so that we can all work together to improve that oral health. And you can offer oral health tips now that you've learned a little bit more about it and as you work with your clients. You can also bring this into their goal setting. Um, for instance, maybe they don't floss at all and you know how important that is. And so you encourage them to set a goal of flossing maybe a couple of times a week to get started and then keep working with that. Or maybe it's a, an, an oral health goal setting of getting to the dentist because you haven't been in the last year. So op lots of navigation opportunities and certainly referrals and resources for them um, as needed. And I did bring some um, resources for you. I have Whatcom County uh, Dental Access Resources. We have actually a lot of organizations that support us here. We have the CMAR Community Health Center and Unity Care Northwest, both community health clinics in Bellingham and Ferndale. And they see patients on a regular basis on a sliding fee scale. So you can really get in there um, and pay really low amount if that's um, an issue for you, if that's hard for you, if that's a barrier for you. We also have the Bellingham Technical College that has a dental hygiene and dental assistant clinic and they provide dental care for anyone in the community at a lower cost, not on a sliding fee scale. We have the Smiles for Life program at the Senior Center here in Bellingham, and that's sponsored by the dental hygienist and their partnering dentists. So the hygienists actually do assessments and cleanings right at the Senior Center, and then they refer to their partnering dentists for treatment. We also have the Whatcom Alliance for Healthcare Advancement, which I would recommend if you're stuck and you have a client that's not able to find services, call the Whatcom, or we call it WAHA, call them and they will be able to help you. And we also have the Lummi Tribal Health Center and the Nooksack Tribal Dental Clinic for our Native American community members. And also, once a year, actually we just had this in July, we have what we call Whatcom County Project Homeless Connect. It's a day where we offer people that are experiencing homelessness 
services uh, throughout the day, lots of different services, but one of them is that we have that Unity Northwest Clinic open all day long, and we will work on any kind of dental treatment that needs to be done, and that is all volunteer services, volunteer supplies and equipment in that clinic. So really a great opportunity. And I wanted to look at the state dental access resources too. So there's nonprofit dental clinics in Federal Way in Vancouver. There's other Smiles for Life um, programs throughout the state. We have many college dental programs throughout the state. We also have the University of Washington actually offers a PED program, an emergent care program, and what they call a DECODE program, which is for persons with disabilities. So lots of opportunity there. And we have donated dental care programs. Um, you can see the uh, access there, Project Access and the Union Gospel Mission. And of course, the community health centers are throughout the state. But this family health hotline was new to me, and I, it's, it's sponsored by an organization called Within Reach. And they are, um, their goal is to provide health um, access to anybody in the state of Washington. And so I would encourage you again, if you get stuck about where do I send or how can I get help from my client, I would definitely call that hotline and um, pursue it in that direction. I think that that would be really helpful and that would help them grow as well. So I just want to thank you for being here. I consider you all an oral health champion and I think that we will, moving forward, be able to promote oral health for our community. So thank you. <laughs>